Thanks for joining us here on CBN News. I'm Heather Sells. And I'm Ephraim Graham. For years, American businesses have been going overseas. Now, many of them want to come back, but something's standing in their way. As Caitlin Burke reports, U.S. government regulations could slow down or even stop the return of Made in America. Across the country, hundreds of companies are helping reverse a long trend of sending American manufacturing jobs overseas. They're doing what's known as reshoring. That's bringing production back home to cities across the U.S. instead of chasing cheap labor and other incentives in developing nations. Over the last four years, about 100,000 jobs have returned to the U.S. That's according to the Reshoring Initiative, a nonprofit group based in Chicago. Many factors contribute to the U.S. regaining a competitive edge over countries like India, Japan, and China. Chinese wages uh, have been rising, expressed in U.S. dollars, at 15 to 18 percent per year for the last 15 years. Whereas in the U.S., it's stayed stationary. Other reasons include delivery time, quality, and innovation. Turns out you can't innovate the product very well if you don't manufacture the product. Chesapeake Bay Candle Company opened its first domestic manufacturing facility in 2011. We created over 80 jobs in the last three years. Owner and CEO Mei Shi started the company back in 1994 in her Maryland basement. We were so impatient waiting, waiting for molds to fill our uh, candles with. Uh, we saw a lot of soup cans lying around the kitchen. We say, wow, these are great molds. So we just use them. Um, the first set of samples were made with those molds. Despite its U.S. origins, May opened her first factory overseas because of cheaper labor cost. If you have a mold, um, you first finish it by pouring wax in it, and then you have to manipulate the texture so that it achieves a desired result. So each candle would be priced at $40 or $50, and it's not really going to be the market that can accept that. The company grew quickly for about 10 years until the 2005 recession blew in. Consumers stopped purchasing as they used to in 2005 or, or before that. So our retail partners demanded a price reduction. That change caused May to reevaluate her decision to do business from China. In the end, it made sense to bring a big part of her company's manufacturing back home. Reshoring, however, can be risky, and many attempts are unsuccessful. Some experts blame those results on the U.S. government. On the one hand, there's the, the reshoring initiative, which is like we've been talking about, this, this push to bring uh, high-paying manufacturing jobs and activities back to the United States. At the same time, the U.S. government, since probably about 2008, has, has gotten really serious about enforcing U.S. regulations governing exports and international conduct. People are being encouraged to bring their manufacturing back here, but they don't realize that the cost of complying with these kinds of regulations and managing the risks of them can be, can be quite substantial. So they, they work across purposes. The opening of the Chesapeake Bay Candle Glen Burnie facility was delayed for six months because of the process of getting a permit. They look at us as if we are a little bit crazy, but they say, um, we haven't given a license in two decades. But we think if you look at hospital code, uh, school code, and the restaurant code, you're safe. During the entire delay, they still had to pay for the facility and key staff members, although the doors remained closed. Eventually, the permits came through, and the Chesapeake Bay Candle Company became one of the success stories. If we have not moved the manufacturing back, we wouldn't be growing like we were growing. About 50% of the company's business currently comes from here in their Glen Burnie factory. But after adding a new production line, they have the capacity to triple that number in the future. Word has been out that we have moved back. We have people knocking on our doors to say, can you produce for us? There are so many companies that we wouldn't dream of, you know, giving us an order easily because they require Made in USA. And May has a message to the government as they encourage more companies to come home. Do not become uh, a business prevention if you are trying to be a business creation. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Glen Burnie, Maryland. Coming up, the new attack you never saw coming, shutting down America's power grid. The threat of domestic terrorism that could bring this nation to its knees when we come back.
The threat of terrorism is escalating around the world. One study shows there were 10,000 terror attacks just last year. And it seems every week there's a new story about a cyber attack on a government institution or a private company. The head of the New York Department of Financial Services is concerned about the U.S.'s financial system. He says it could be vulnerable to an Armageddon-type cyber event. Other experts are concerned about the U.S. power grid, warning it could be damaged through a physical or cyber attack. If terrorists took down the power grid, it could lead to chaos across the country. In this chilling report, Mark Martin shows us it could happen much more easily than you think. With its maze of electric equipment, the Metcalf transmission substation quietly took up space in California's Santa Clara County. On April 16th last year, that all changed. Take a look at this surveillance video. You can see the muzzle flash of rifles and sparks from bullets striking the chain link fence around the substation. For nearly 20 minutes, snipers unloaded, then vanished before police arrived. Even the shell casings left behind, the kind ejected by AK-47s, carried no fingerprints. Authorities later discovered the military-style attack blasted 17 giant transformers and six circuit breakers, resulting in more than $15 million in damage. Those transformers send power to an area that heavily relies on it, Silicon Valley. Former FBI agent Rick Smith, who was a part of the anti-terrorism unit, said the message is clear. Obviously, it wasn't just a couple of guys out having a beer. There was some, there was some orchestrated attack that was planned, and, and uh, it, it looked somewhat professional. If you don't have any power, you obviously have disruption. And the message is that, that, the, that the, our facilities were, were vulnerable. Fortunately, in the Metcalf case, electric grid officials rerouted power to prevent a blackout. Still, that did not stop John Wellinghoff, the chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission at the time, from telling the Wall Street Journal the attack was, quote, the most significant incident of domestic terrorism involving the grid that has ever occurred in the U.S. That statement unleashed a firestorm from lawmakers and security experts wondering about the vulnerability of the American power grid in the event of a physical attack and EMP, or electromagnetic pulse attack. Uh, that's where you would basically wipe out our electric grid and any instruments that use uh, computer chips. California Assemblyman Jim Patterson, vice chair of the Utilities and Commerce Committee, agrees with Wellinghoff. What keeps me awake at night and a lot of the people who produce and distribute power in California is this whole question about whether this was isolated or whether we need to see this as the beginning of a new security risk. The big picture is, though, that uh, this is an indication of the soft targets and the variety of targets in this, this new attack on, on America. Rich Lorden of the Electric Power Research Institute calls the attack and its execution unprecedented. So the feeling is, is this may have been preparation for an act of war. Lorden's colleague at the Institute strongly disagrees. I think he was off base for making that uh, sensational kind of remark. Uh, I don't understand why he would even say that. And, and, you know, we've had quite a conversation since then about this. Gelling's thoughts on the motivation behind the attack, however, don't change his concern for the security of the grid. It's an ongoing battle to stay one step ahead of these folks who might want to do us some harm, not just physical harm to the power system, but also the cyber side. There's a lot of ground to cover in that battle. The U.S. power grid is extensive, and from the East Coast to the West Coast, many substations are located in remote areas with minimum security. This substation in rural Northern California does have a high, thick chain link fence with barbed wire on top, and you can see the main gate is locked. But look, I'm standing right next to the facility and there are no security cameras or security personnel nearby. CBN News discovered the same situation in the largest city in the country. This is the Farragut Switch Yard. The electricity that comes through here powers the financial district and also much of the New York City subway system. As you can see, it's only protected by a flimsy fence and minimum security. If it's accessible to us, experts say it's also accessible to terrorists. As horrible as 9-11 was to this nation and to the city, uh, had the terrorists flown two planes into this facility, the consequences to New York City and to the nation 
would have been orders of magnitude uh, more damaging than what actually happened. I hope we never get to the point where we have to monitor this entire infrastructure, which is literally millions of miles of wire, 150,000 poles and, and roughly the same number of substations. Impossible. However, Gellings and other leaders are by no means throwing in the towel. Pacific Gas and Electric, owner of the Metcalf substation, has worked with federal and local agencies and consultants to increase security. Among other things, company leaders plan to put up opaque fencing, advanced camera systems and lighting, and more alarms. These are things we've already done, perform a risk assessment, evaluate uh, the, uh, the gaps we have, and then implement uh, strategies to fill those gaps. One strategy is increasing patrols around substations. As CBN News walked around and shot video of the Metcalf substation, it took about half an hour before we encountered inquisitive deputies with the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department. There's a lot more uh, patrolling. There's a lot more uh, public safety eyes. There's a lot more uh, tracking and identifying of potential domestic threat with respect to that kind of chatter. As far as the hardening of the grid itself, Gelling says the Electric Power Research Institute is literally developing a Kevlar vest to put around transformers to protect them. He says researchers are also working on devices that would sense the vibrations of people and report that movement to provide more awareness of the situation on location. And then we want to get uh, overall situational awareness and use such as unmanned aerial vehicles to actually look at a whole area of the power system. The drone idea has been met with reluctance from the FAA. That's not stopping power industry leaders and others, though, from exploring options to fortify a grid which has shown itself to be quite vulnerable. Mark Martin, CBN News, California. Up next, a marriage on the rocks. See how this couple's marriage was saved and how what they learned can help you and your spouse. Angel Davis was so miserable in her marriage, she actually looked forward to her husband dying, but not anymore. Now the Christian psychotherapist believes it is possible to fix a broken marriage no matter how bad it seems, and all it takes, she says, is you. Paul Strand brings us this encouraging story of how one spouse can save a marriage. Angel Davis expected the perfect Christian marriage with husband Lee, but when he didn't measure up to all her expectations and wouldn't put up with her trying to change him, she began fantasizing a way out. Because I'm a Christian, I didn't think divorce was an option, so I felt stuck and trapped, and I even thought about him dying because I felt like that was the only way out. That's how dark my heart had gotten. That was probably the thing that hurt me the most. Lee believes Angel should never have been depending on him for things humans just can't deliver at the deepest level. Your spouse can't make you happy. And if you are waiting for that, you're probably going to be waiting forever. This Christian psychotherapist says she even began to listen to Satan's twisted logic for why her marriage should end. I got to the point where I thought if I left my husband, I could do more for the Lord. But then a friend brought Angel to a life-changing moment. She looked me in the eye and she said, Angel, where in the Bible does it say you can do this for the reason you want to do this? And I knew the word. And so it was, it was like cold water in my face. That's when she truly surrendered her marriage and herself to God. And he began planting in her heart the principles of how one spouse can save a troubled marriage and change their husband or wife the right way. With therapist Angel Davis has shown hundreds of people here in her office, and now in her book, The Perfecting Storm, is the secret to changing your spouse for the better, rest in changing you first. Angel witnessed a radical example of this when her friends Ron and Carrie were tottering on the edge of divorce after Carrie found out Ron was having an affair and didn't really want to change. But Carrie, though bitterly hurt and not wanting to forgive Ron, put herself before God and heard him tell her this about Ron. I was to take him back and we were to forge a path of reconciliation. Ron's sexual sins had cost him his job and his home and he was expecting to lose his family. But then Carrie told him what she'd heard from God and that she was going to grit her teeth and obey. For her to be obedient to that despite the fact that she was undergoing so much pain and so much hurt, 
um, all I could do was, um, in all honesty, I just, I just, I lost it. I mean, I just broke down and sobbed in front of her. He's extremely grateful because he knows that I basically gave him a gift that he did not deserve. Carrie's willingness to bend and change led Ron to wanting to bend and change, too. It's been several years since Ron's affair and Carrie's taking him back, and now they say their 29-year marriage is better than ever. When you put aside your feelings and put aside your arguments and say, you know what, I'm going to obey God like she did, radical things happen. It is possible for your marriage to be restored. It is possible to fall in love with your husband once again. Meanwhile, Angel was practicing the same things Carrie had done when Ron and Carrie's marriage seemed doomed, like letting God change her rather than insisting husband Lee change, like receiving inner healing that she says most of us need, like beginning to show Lee real respect because God said to. And guess what? <laughs> he started acting in ways that, that I had longed for him to act all those years. All this takes learning to hear God's voice and obey his marching orders. It just gives certainty, gives security, gives direction. And he's talking all the time and we're hardwired to hear his voice, but we got to figure out how to hear it. He is the still small voice and he speaks in many different ways. God taught her her real enemy wasn't Lee, but the devil who wants to kill and destroy marriages. I have been looking at, at my husband as the enemy. And it was like God took the veil off and I saw I'm fighting the wrong battle. As Angel's been teaching and sharing these principles around her Athens, Georgia area and through the perfecting storm, others have seen their marriages profit, like Clay and Debbie Huckabee. I finally stopped spending so much time worrying about what Clay was doing and I started working on my own self and um, get my own act together. I don't think it's ever been better and I, I feel like uh, um, that's largely due to her, but, but, but because um, we, we've gotten to where we enjoy working at it. Friend Leslie McCullough is so enthusiastic about the perfecting storm, she and her husband have been selling it at their place, Brett's Restaurant. Angel had to keep interrupting her lunch with us there to sign copies. She's just not an excited author, though. She believes with all her heart in what she's written because she's seen it radically affect her own marriage and so many of those around her. If you'll break before God and learn to listen to his voice, Angel guarantees he'll give you his divine guidance and his plans to make your marriage work. Then you really will have a marriage made in heaven. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Athens, Georgia. Coming up, honoring America's greatest generation, the unique program that brings hundreds of veterans to our nation's capital. And finally today, the Honor Flight Network brings hundreds of veterans to our nation's capital all year long, and that includes members of America's greatest generation who put their lives on the line for our freedom. CBN News caught up with one group of those veterans at the World War II Memorial. Matt Keeley has their story. One by one, as these veterans filed off the bus, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. supporters greeted them with a hero's welcome. My husband and I come almost every Saturday to the memorial to meet the Honor Flight Network uh, groups coming in. It's a wonderful program. Well, thanks to the Honor Flight Network, groups of veterans from across the country are brought here to the World War II Memorial, a place dedicated to their courage and sacrifice. But the unmistakable message given to these veterans, you mattered then and you matter now. The free trip to visit the memorial comes courtesy of the Honor Flight Network. The World War II veterans, um, they were a generation that didn't feel that they deserved anything. They just did their job, and they did a very good job. So this is a small token of paying them back. The veterans we spoke with were from Ohio. Some of them went to fight overseas at the young age of 17. Decades later, you can still hear their sense of duty and love of country. I didn't want to wait for uh, them to draft me. Right. I wanted to go where I wanted to go. The country that had been good to me, I wanted to, to serve it. They took pictures, shook hands, and recounted events that forever changed their lives. This uh, Japanese uh, suicide bomber was trying to hit a battleship that was over here, and he missed and it hit the front of our ship. One of my brothers was killed at Guadalcanal when the ship was sunk. My mother never got over that, uh, and it affected the rest of us. Jim Bennett, who served during high school, said he will always remember this moment. 
It happened just a few minutes ago up there at the top when Elizabeth Dole came up to me and thanked me and hugged me. Having served our country over 70 years ago and now being honored at their memorial, they shared a prayer for America's future. Of course, we hope for, uh, for peace, prosperity. We need to get back to Christian values, and it, of course, it's very distressing to see what's happened around the world. To reestablish the, the proper relationship with our Lord. The Honor Flight Network, inspiring Americans to say thank you, no matter what day it is. It's a great way to, to share your faith and to share your um, love for others, to, to help these uh, veterans. Matthew Keedy, CBN News. That is great to know that's mm -hmm. going on. Yes, indeed. They are our greatest generation for sure. That is it for now on CBN News Today, and you can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues that you care most about at CBNNews.com. Tell us what you think about the stories you've seen here. You can do it on Facebook or at CBN News on Twitter. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. Have a fabulous day, everybody.